Good. Good afternoon. Um, I I don't know. How, well, it's a nice group. So we have about a dozen here. Um, and yes, learning. I, I better make you the co-host. Uh, let me see. Right. Yes. Okay. Um, so actually, I would like to understand a little bit more about um, what your interests are, what you, um, how um, let me, would you like to do the, um, the very quick poll or not? Let me, you're muted. So uh, shall we do the polling or just ask? Yes, I think the, you're polling okay. first. Yeah, maybe that would be easier. Um, okay. So yes, because I want to understand a little bit, say whether, uh, what your interests are and how how many of you have actually um, watched the video because if you have watched the video then we won't um, sort of burden you with that and if not then we can go through some of that yeah uh, because I mean not everyone is having a video otherwise we can just have show of hands yeah yeah so maybe maybe everyone can check can look at the chat box and I just send out a link for the uh, Mentimeter to want to get some response from you. And then you can simply you type in the www.menti.com and then uh, type in the code. And then we can do a quick uh, polling to, un to understand your background or your in interest for this uh, workshop. Yeah, actually, if we were able to do some preparation in, in Zoom before, it would be um, easier to have the poll inside. Um, but anyway, so um, so the so we we typed up dot 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 menti dot com and then we put in the the code. So oh, maybe I can share my screen to uh, sh show the result. Okay, we can see the polling results from the screen now. So, let me see. Ah, good. Well, that's a good uh, distribution. We have three instructional designers, two teachers, um, staff, developers, administrator, and then also a uh, researcher. Very good. Um, so, right. So, still didn't open the second uh, question. Oh, okay. the second question. Okay. Okay, the one who says both is me. <laughs> well, I think we probably have everyone sort of enter once. I mean, if you want to respond, I think everyone who, okay. In that case, um, shall we shall we start by actually going over some of the things? So, I mean, we have eight who haven't watched any. So, okay. In that case. Um, Let me maybe we can have the 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 um, maybe we can start with a conceptual slide first, and then we can then do some demo. Okay, sure. So, uh, will you share your screen to 
introduce the model. Okay, should I share my screen? Okay, so the um Which one should I use? Okay. Oh. No, In sorry. this video, we will provide. No, sorry, I should just use the slide. I should have got the. Um, Maybe um, so um, everyone see my screen, right? Yes. 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 Good. Okay. So I'll just very quickly um, sort of um, give an introduction to the Learning Design Studio. Uh, basically the underpinning ideas and then um, and then we can also then a learning can take you through the actual learning design studio so as i said um, we we had um, we have had sort of three versions this is the second version because um, uh, this is the one that uh, we have done a lot more work and so this one you can just self-register so if you just um, type the link and then you just uh, go in and then you would be able to sign up. There's no uh, no approval needed. Yeah, the only approval needed would be say after you have co um, contributed your say after you have de completed your design, you want to share your design with other people, then uh, you can uh, say I want to submit to the public and then we will review. And then if we, we think that is uh, appropriate, then we would uh, share with others. And then you would also be acknowledged that you are the, um, the author. So basically, as I said before, the, um, the whole design idea is that we won't just look at a small, say, lesson or um, you know, uh, something which is a smaller unit, um, but we want to have looking at a kind of more like a coherent unit or module because in this case then, uh, because we are encouraging teachers to think more about the overall, what do you want um, the students to learn? So to us, learning design should start with defining the uh, learning outcomes. And so, so this is another view of the, um, at the top level, the cost level design, um, like many of the other tools, we would ask the, uh, the teachers to uh, put in the um, basic information about the course that they are trying to design. And then for the uh, learning outcomes, we, um, we actually separate into three categories and we want the, the learning designer to think about, okay, so what's the disciplinary knowledge that we want the, the students to learn? Uh, what are the skills and also we want them to think about the generic skills so it's very much what we call the 21st century skills like problem solving collaboration and so on so and we call and so so this is the interface at the course level and then once we go into the after we we define what the course is we want then say for example if we're teaching a course on um say algebra then you have certain topics and you would have certain uh, coherent sort of curriculum, what we call curriculum component. And each component would then uh, target certain uh, outcomes. And then for each component, it would have a sequence of tasks um, that you would go through. So, and why do we say that it is a, a pedagogically neutral um, uh, sort of design to? It's because we don't push, we don't say, um, you know, which pedagogy you want to be um, using or, so, so in a way it allows you to do everything you want. But at the same time, you are left to yourself to make decisions. 
And moreover, in this case, we don't really uh, have a very explicit way to guide the teacher on how, how to consider the, um, uh, the pedagogy. Um, so, so we guide them to think about a sequence. So, this, so we have a procedural guidance. But actually, in deciding on which curriculum components, then we should be thinking about two things. One is, what's the pedagogical approach? And the second is, what's the practice scenario that you want um, the learner to do? So what would, I, what would we mean by pedagogical approach? Say, for example, a lot of professional um, uh, degrees would, uh, I mean, a very popular approach would be problem-based learning. And if we look at problem-based learning, there is certain sequence of things that um, the course would, uh, would be like, say, it could be, uh, it has to be around problems. And each problem, you start with formulating the problem and, and so on. So in this case, um, we haven't made this explicit. Um, and also say, if it is problem-based um, learning, whether it's in engineering or in, um, say, uh, medicine or in, um, say, teacher education, then the sequence and the scenario would be quite different. And so we, so this is the, um, so in this case, we, we allow you to do everything, but also it doesn't have a very explicit support. Um, and you can see that um, just like the learning designer, we have also, um, differentiated tasks into, um, in a way there are 12 task types, but the 12 task types, uh, we categorize them into four categories because we think that, and, and you can see that they are different shades of the same color. So one group is directed learning. So it's more like the instruction and then the practice um, testing and so on. Another would be what we call exploratory learning. What are exploratory learning? There are three types of explore, exploratory learning. Uh, explorations through, um, well, explorations of information. So you do information search, evaluation, and so on. So there's exploring information. Another is exploration through conversations, discussions. Um, it could be forums or face-to-face -face and so on. And then the third one would be uh, what we call tangible or immersive explorations. So it goes from, um, say, doing experiments or, say, uh, playing with um, uh, simulations or even games and also, um, say, AR, VR type of explorations. These would be belong to the exploratory learning. And then productive learning is when you say a lot of times you talk about maker, um, you know, pedagogy. So you learn through making something. So there are three types of making. One is what we call conceptual um, artifacts. So if you make, uh, if you write something, uh, or say you write an essay, or you do a presentation, or, or you make a PowerPoint, or you do a poster, that would be that kind. And then you can also have um, a performance type of production, and it can also be presentations. Um, so, and then the, th the fourth type is very important, a uh, reflection. So, re um, so it can be also through um, revision is also one form of reflection. And then also peer evaluation, self-evaluation is also one form of reflective learning. And so um, within the, we can also go into the uh, task level design, looking at social organization, what kind of feedback, what kind of motivators, uh, resources, and tools. And we do have a designer dashboard, uh, which would show um, the designer based on the time allocation, uh, how much time is given to say, for example, in this case, uh, the blue is the, the largest sector. So a lot of um, directed learning, but there is also um, about a quarter of the time is on exploratory learning, about uh, less than a 
um, a quarter would be on uh, productive learning and still about 10% on uh, reflective learning through self or peer evaluation. And we also have the social organization because we feel that any type of uh, learning activities could be done, um, have different kind of organization like a group or individual or say peer review or whole class learning. So, um, so maybe I will stop here and ask, um, is there any question that you want to clarify in regard to the Learning Design Studio higher education or any comments? Hi. Yes. You said that yes. you don't yes. direct uh, you. Yeah. You said that you don't direct uh, teachers to a certain uh, pedagogy. And is it possible to choose uh, from a variety of uh, pedagogies or you just build it yourself? And uh, okay, you're, you're asking, say, in this, in this particular case, can we choose a particular pedagogy? Yeah. Um, not yet. Okay. So the, so the next, um, so actually, this is what we are working on now. So the, the new version, we want people to be able to select, um, you know, some pedagogy, and then we can then scaffold them. Mm -hmm. Yeah, okay. right. Um, any other um, questions or comments? Um, if I think no, maybe then... we can experience it and then we'll have more comments. <clears throat> yes, yes, yes. Okay, good. Yeah, so maybe I'll just um, um, talk more, a little bit more about the question that Shaker just asked. So when we think about providing pedagogical support, what we would like, uh, so we have a kind of like a framework for it. So what we think, what, we're, what we would be doing is that we would ask people to think about the kind of learning outcomes. And depending on the learning outcome, we might be then able to propose, um, you know, certain pedagogical approaches that would be uh, relevant. And we also would like to, um, uh, because we want to promote um, pedagogies that are more um, collaborative and inquiry oriented. So, so based on that, we might also provide a kind of like a suggestion on what kind of um, practice. So we would be giving, um, okay. Um, so once we, we define, so we start with the learning outcome and then the pedagogical approach. And then, um, so to give an example, um, we would, Say, for example, if you're, you're in the STEM area and you want to do a kind of maker, a kind of pedagogy. So, okay, self-directed learning, you want the students to be self-directed, but there are many ways to do self-directed learning. Say, if in science, if you're doing a scientific investigation, then you want the, the students to take on a kind of like an image that you are, um, say you're working with your group as a scientific team. And so you would start with identifying the problem and so on and so forth. And you come up with a kind of like a research report for your scientific investigation. But then if you are looking at making something as a solution, then of course you still start with identifying the problem. But then the solution is towards making something. So we would be using engineering design as the kind of disciplinary practice to map onto the pedagogical approach. And after that, we can then try to develop a kind of like a, a learning um, focus. Uh, I mean, uh, looking at the sequence and then we have the sequence. And for each component, we then um, decide on the sequence of tasks. Say for example, if in this case, we one part of the, the, the teacher's learning um, I mean, the learning outcome that the teacher wants the students to overcome is, so maybe it's a science topic and the teacher knows that I'm, I'm teaching um, gravity today. But then I know that many of my students would think that uh, heavier things would fall faster. 
So, so there is a lot of misconceptions that the, the students would have in their head. And the teacher thinks that he or she needs to dispel these uh, misconceptions first. Then she wants to design a kind of like a, a component which would do that task. And so uh, the system might suggest, or the teacher may himself or herself uh, decide to do something what they call uh, a kind of like a strategy, uh, predict, observe, explain. So, so with that, then you can see that there are three green boxes. Two of them are light green, which are exploration through conversations. And then this one would be a, a tangible exploration. So you actually do an experiment. So you predict, and then you observe, and then you explain. Uh, you observe, and then you um, explain and reflect on uh, what it is. So, uh, so we will be taking you through an example of how to use the, the new system, how we actually scaffold the um, self-directed learning. So um, say in STEM, most likely it would be either engineering design or scientific investigation. And so you, these are simplified um, sequence uh, in these two approaches. And then for us, the um, self-directed learning is a five stage process too. Goal setting, self-planning, self-monitoring, self-evaluation, and revision. So with these, we can then come up with a sequence of um, five curriculum components. So engineering design, so identify design problem by goal setting, EDA and design innovative solutions by self-planning, construct the prototype by self-monitoring, test performance of the product by self-evaluation, and then finally optimize the product by revision. So that's the kind of um, scaffolded process that we are planning to work on. So, so each of these. So um, we will give you a, a guided tour on the smart backpack. So um, Lerming, um, can I pass it on to you? Yeah, so uh, maybe I can, so if you want me to try out the HD version or the LDS okay, so version. Is there any preference, say, um, colleagues here? Do you, so um, yes, we should be giving you a guided tour. How would you like us to do it? Uh, you want us to show you the, um, the generic one, the higher education one without any pedagogical support, or do you want the uh, the newer one, which is not fully um, tested yet, but uh, it has that kind of um, uh, idea. Which one would you prefer? The newer one? Yeah, mm -hmm. the new one. The new one. Okay. So take us through the new one then, learning. Okay, sure. Uh, So, uh, oh, this is not the new one. Uh, you have the next tab. Yes. The next okay. Tab. So as Nancy just mentioned, this new one is have uh, pedagogical guidance. Uh, it has a pedagogical preference for teachers to choose it using the cell dark learning. This is also catered to the STEM, uh, K to 12 STEM context. So, uh, this uh, platform provides several scarf, what we call scarf holdings for the teachers. So um, I will show you how the how does the scarf holding looks like. So uh, we first log in. Uh, mm -hmm. So. Uh, once you have signed, uh, you can see what you have worked, what your learning design have worked here. So uh, I have produced uh, an example of the le learning design. You can see the public design, so you can share your design as public here. Uh, 
No, maybe I should start with a new one so that you can see how the uh, scaffolding works. So at the new pedagogy, as Nancy has mentioned that because for the STEM ed education, there are two forms of what we call the disciplinary practice. One is we want to ask the student to produce something that is what we call the engineering design, or if you want the student to uh, it, uh, to do an investigation on a scientific problem, so they can uh, find a problem and then design um, an experiment and conduct the experiment and have some results. So the the other form is the scientific investigation. So the teacher may think about this first. So if you choose the engineering design, and then the platform you ask you to think about uh, the de the detail of the lesson. So here, if you want a student to have a deeper understanding, so uh, we cannot uh, ask the student to achieve the learning outcome in a single lesson. So uh, ba uh, basically, we will have several lessons to combine as a curriculum unit. So uh, this is what we call the unit title. Uh, we will have a smart backpack which we will ask the students to design a smart backpack using sensors to, to address some kinds of the daily problems, such as the security, such as the, uh, to, me to measure the weight of the backpack. So this may be used for the grade five students and we will, uh, the school will arrange four, four lessons for uh, this unit. And you can also see that there are some hints here these hints are some pedagogical consideration for the teachers. Say, uh, the teachers think about uh, whether it is realistic to ask students to, uh, to make a school backpack and achieve this learning outcome in four lessons. And the teacher may think about the characteristic of the grade five students. So this is some uh, pedagogical hints here. And here teachers can write down uh, the, uh, the basic description of the course. So I just simply click text here. So you can see that uh, we start our design from the learning outcome because we adopt an outcome-based approach. And you can see that the platform has already preloaded some learning outcomes here because this, this preloaded learning outcome is based on your selection at the first step because you have chose the entering design as the STEM practice, so here uh, we suggest two, uh, two learning outcome here. One is because uh, usually uh, we can facilitate students design thinking through, through taking a student go through the uh, engineering design process. So here you can see that the design thinking can be listed as one of the learning outcome and categorized as the disciplinary skills. And also because we adopt a self-directed learning approach and we also want the student to become a self-directed learner. So we can see that generic skill here, we want to uh, facilitate student self-directed learning strategies here. So it is obvious that uh, we want students to uh, achieve, achieve more. So uh, we can simulate add learning outcome here. Say if um, I'm teaching some of the, uh, like I'm teaching uh, physics and want the students to understand uh, the electric circuit here. So we just add the disciplinary practice here and here has hints what we mean by the disciplinary knowledge, disciplinary skills, and also the generic skills. And we also have the Bloom taxonomy to guide the teacher to write a realistic or measurable learning outcomes here. So if I want the students to comprehend the concept of the electric of the electric circuit here. So we just comprehend because uh, this is belong to the uh, science domain in STEM. And here you can see that we also have some prompt words uh, for the teacher to write their learning outcome. Say I would like the student to explain the concept of electric um, uh, circuit here. Also, if I also want the student to uh, are able to connect some sensor because I want to use the sensor uh, to making the school backpack. So also we can see that um, we can ask the students to um, to use uh, sensors 
to create a small backpack. So uh, we have this kinds of uh, guidance to guide the teachers to write the uh, learning outcomes. So when you finish the learning outcome and then click the next step, here uh, the platform also have suggested some of the uh, what we call the curriculum component based on your selection on the engineering design. So uh, basically the engineering design usually go through five, five steps that Nancy just showed you in the presentation, like uh, the student will identify the problem first and then find a solution, construct the prototype, test the performance, and then revise the product. So this, uh, this sequence is based on your selection in on the engineering design in the first step stand practice here. Oh, sorry. Uh, oh. Hmm. Yes, here you can see oh, once the, the sequence has determined and then we can do the task design in different components. Here, like the first step, we want a student to identify the problem first and how, how can a student to identify the problem and what kinds of learning outcome can be achieved here. Here, we also have some suggestion for the learning outcome that can be achieved in this component. And you can see that uh, two learning outcome regarding the design thinking process can be facilitated here. One is we want the students to em empathize with users and we want the students have able can, can define the design problems. These two are associated with the design thinking process. So uh, we have some kinds of suggestion here. And in terms of the self data learning, in this particular component, we want the student to learn to how to do goal setting in this uh, component. And here we also have suggest some, um, some learning task sequence here. First, say how, how can we ask the student to do the uh, define, to identify the problem. So we may ask the student to observe a scenario for the design problem, and then we will have uh, and uh, an activity like we will ask the student to do some client interview. In this client interview, uh, one student will play a role, uh, will have a role playing. One can be a client and one can be the interviewer. So the interviewer will uh, ask the client their needs and then un understand their needs. And then student will work on what they have collected from the interview. and. And, um, and define a problem they find in the interview and then present to the whole class. So this is the uh, task sequence for the first component, identify problem through goal setting. So this can activity, we start, okay. we start here first. So, so as you can see, um, so we, we've actually uh, make it easier for the um, teacher when they start to, to have something sort of built in, a, a kind of like a skeleton, have a skeleton. So if you want, so it's really for the novice. So they, they, they think, I mean, okay, they know when they come in that uh, we recommend them if you're doing STEM and if you want to do something that um, asks the students to make something, uh, you should be thinking about design thinking as one of the learning outcome. And, and so, so we are, and then with the first, so the first um, curriculum component should then be, uh, so you can see that say, for example, here, stop, stop. Um, the first, um, the first task is uh, learning. Can you show the, um, yeah, okay, he's uh, this one. Yeah. So students observe the scenario of the design problems through stimulus. So, so basically, it doesn't know. I mean, the, the system doesn't really know what you want to teach. But then, so say, for example, if you are thinking about the smart backpack, so you are thinking about, say, people, um, the students carrying a very heavy backpack every day. So what would be the problem if you were to, say, if you were to be looking for a smart backpack, what kind of smartness do you want? And so, so you, so it's, stimulating, okay, so it's actually prompting the teacher to think, okay, now this is what you want the students to think about. So you can define what kind of stimulus. And so, of course, 
then you you need to provide some resources say for example like a video it doesn't provide you with a video but it suggests that a video might be something that you can consider and so at this point it's probably uh, a, a receiving and interpreting information type and it is sort of suggesting maybe you don't need too much time because it's just a stimulus and then after that um, they would be discussing and they can have a kind of like a client interview to understand the designer's needs and so on. So, so maybe we should stop here and ask if you have any questions first. Anyone? Can you follow? I think it's quite self-explanatory. Okay. It's very Good. well explained. Okay, thank you. So, so, um, so basically, say if you if you think that uh, you don't want to start with um, uh, showing a video, maybe you want them to start with discussing the problem with backpacks first. It's okay, and you can easily change the order. Can we change the order here? Yes. Yes. So you can show. Yeah. So you can use drag and drop and yes, change or, the order yes. of the activity. Or you can simply add a learning task that can cater to the uh, discussion here. See, uh, we can choose the type of uh, 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 exploration through conversation here and mm -hmm. how much time we will use. And you can do all the settings, all the class settings groups, uh, four people per groups, what kinds of resources, maybe we can provide some worksheet to guide the uh, discussion or we want them to discuss on Moodle. Yes. I have a question. Yes. Yeah. When, you, when you're when you setting up a new task, will there be an option to get uh, suggestions from things that other teachers did or other instructors did from the... Yes, that's a very, very good um, question. In fact, as you can see, um, this is like a pattern, isn't it? So we have a pattern for uh, self-directed learning for engineering design. And, and so, we'll, so, so this is something which is a pattern, which is a, a framework without content. But then once, say, if we have used this to do our smart backpack, then the smart backpack curriculum unit becomes something which is a design. And the design belongs to this um, engineering design um, pattern. And so if another teacher, I say, if I, if I make it public and then you use it to create something else, also associated with this particular pattern, then we would have more than one. And so the idea is that we would be able, so hopefully we would be able to have a kind of like an archive of designs which are different. And, and we are also hoping to be able to um, have comments on, or say, for example, we, I mean, even if it's our own work, we might want to put some uh, remarks or comments or if, because, you might have a very nice design, uh, but you have to implement. So in terms of the actual implementation, you might need to do something, right? So you maybe have, say so you might be careful about, say sometimes students might tend to forget about this and there could be a danger in this kind of step. So, so you can have remarks. So this is, um, so that's what we are hoping to be able to build in. Yes, very good, thank you. Um, any other comments or questions? Um, if no, then maybe um, learning you can sort of, um, should we, I don't know, I mean, we, we can, we can uh, go on. There is another question in the chat box I can see. Is it possible to collaborate on the design with colleagues? Yes. Definitely, yes. Uh, we have created some group functions and the design can be shared within a group and uh, they can uh, work 
collaboratively on this design. Yeah. Uh, yeah. We can see the design group here. So we have different groups here and the design can share with, within a group or share to the public. Actually, one uh, we I mean we is I mean in the previous I mean the, the HE version we've got uh, a very nice um, sort of group structure for sharing and also in um, in addition to sharing designs we can also share patterns and the patterns can be a whole course so uh, a unit pattern. But we can also have patterns like, say, for example, the predict, observe, explain. So we can have different patterns that uh, works for particular types of outcomes or settings. Um, so, but we we need to have more of the um, yeah. So you can so uh, yeah. Learning is showing you some of the um, the patterns. We can have your own private pattern. You can also have. Um, you can also access public pattern and you can also have your own um, group patterns or group designs. Yeah. Um, <coughs> any particular other requests? Um, I tried it, and uh, does it support uh, Hebrew? Because I was writing in Hebrew, but I don't know at the end how it looks like. Oh. So it doesn't work. So it doesn't work in Hebrew. No, it doesn't work in Hebrew. Oh. OK. OK. So that means, OK, so of course the interface is in English. But uh, when you type in the text in Hebrew, yeah. you cannot save. Uh, because we can do it in Chinese. I will try. <laughs> <laughs> so I need to understand. Okay? Yeah, I mean, this multilingual feature is very important. Yeah. Maybe, um, yeah, maybe I can, I can, I can work with Yishe later to see whether, uh, I mean, what's the problem from stopping, uh, you know, people to work in other languages because We've, we've done it in, in, um, in English. I mean, we did it first for English, but then we also, uh, we were able to use Chinese. I mean, that's absolutely important for us to be able to work in Chinese. I don't know whether we need to do something with the, um, with the, the, the code to be able to, um, for it to, to take in uh, other languages. Yeah. You're good to know that it doesn't work with Hebrew. I thought it's multilingual. <laughs> okay. No, I was typing in Hebrew and it was okay. I just don't know if it's how it looks like later. Mm, 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 mm. Okay. And Nancy, would you like to respond one more question in the chat box? Uh, okay. So, which disciplines have you found LDS to be more helpful <coughs> in and in which less so? Um, okay. Now, first of all, um, for us at the Center for IT and Education, we've, we've been working with um, K-12 teachers, particularly in the STEM area for a long time. So clearly, uh, we have been biased more towards the, um, the STEM area, um, and it definitely worked there. But um, when I've been using it to teach my uh, master level students who are doing a master in IT and education and I teach a course on learning design with technology. And so I, I always ask my students to work in groups to come up with a learning design. And so over the past two years, I've been um, asking them to do their project in, uh, in LDSHE and also, so I want them to do it in LDSHE and also um, to implement the design after they've done it in, in the uh, learning design studio um, on Moodle as the learning um, management system. And I think the, you know, the, 
I haven't seen particular uh, disciplines because I ask them to try different levels and also I always assign the students say some of them do it in the humanity some of them do it in the um, in the STEM area um, and they both seem I mean both seem to work but I haven't but I haven't had as many users in the STEM area compared to the arts and humanities and I think for, from, my, from my perspective, the biggest challenge would not be the discipline. No, sorry. But, um, yeah, it's not the discipline per se, but um, what kind of pedagogy would be useful for a particular um, uh, discipline areas? And, and because I don't have a strong sort of arts and humanities um, so, well, he, I mean, education, yes, but say if you talk about history, geography, then I'm, I'm not that familiar. And so, so um, I would say I hope to be able to work with a more diverse group, um, uh, you know, with the background. Then I, I'm, I'm sure that we would be able to, to, to sort of customize it. Yeah. Ah, yes, good question. Um, yes. Uh, when we design, when we design the, the the LDS, our our dream, our vision, is for it to to be connected to a learning management system, and we've actually already done a, a kind of like a proof of concept to make the LDS as a as a module in Moodle. So so that means, hopefully later we can actually just log into Moodle. And then actually start the design it, uh, in the uh, LDS module in Moodle. And then the beauty of that is that we would like to be able to have the assessment and also the learning analytics built in to the uh, learning design studio. Because from our perspective, assessment design is part of learning design. And, and so to be able to do analytics on, on the learners' activities and the uh, learning outcomes is very important, both as a, a form of providing feedback to the learner and also as a form of providing feedback <coughs> to us as um, you know, learning designers. So, so I mean, we, I, we don't know how, when we would exactly have that realized, but what we would like to be able to do is in addition to the designer dashboard, we would have a learning analytics dashboard built in to the learning design studio. So once we got it plugged in, because all the data is on the learning management system, so we would then be able to specify the um, learning analytics to be shown to the learner and the, uh, and the learning designer or the teacher um, you know, through the learning design studio. Yeah. Uh, with an iframe. Oh yes. Um, okay. What we would yes, actually, when we when we design the L, the LDS, we don't do it directly on on the Moodle because we want the design to be able to be exported and be imported to other um, you know, learning management systems. So uh, at the moment, we can, we can export the designs as JSON files. So, so supposedly, if we can uh, get the uh, protocol correct, then the design can be exported from the LDS and then be imported to other learning um, management systems. I mean, the main thing is uh, in the learning design studio, we can have a lot of different learning activities, but some, but they may not all be supported by the, um, by the learning management system. Say for example, uh, edX or the open edX, it has a very limited set of activities. And so if we do all the design on the learning design studio, we might find very frustrating because we can't implement it on that learning management system. So there is a, a need to say, okay, so if you're designing for a learning management system X, 
then these are the only things that you can choose. Yeah. Right. So, did I, have I answered all the questions? Well, I'm, I think we still have a few minutes, so it, I'm happy to answer more. How many of you are actually using any learning design um, tools for your work? Anyone have actually tried it out for real design purpose? Have you been digital tools for? Uh... Yes. Yes. No. Uh -huh. It's mean, actually very um, instructive. I can tell you my story. You know, I started by designing the, uh, the tool for K-12 teachers. And then I, because we have to do the, the HE version, <clears throat> I challenged myself um, to use. Initially, we didn't have, because initially I thought, well, the K-12 um, version can still be sort of modified very easily for the higher education. And then very quickly, once I started, I realized no. So, so I think um, to, to actually meet the needs of the particular user group is important. So, so I think if you're interested, um, do try it out. And if you have any question, um, just send us the, um, an email. Um, the e uh, can we type in? I mean, LDS at um, site.hku.hk, can we type it in? Uh, well, we can we can send it to uh, Yishe later, and then uh, so you can actually send messages to us. We can also uh, we can also have the contact uh, information on on our website on on the on the tool. So um, we would be very happy to to receive uh, any feedback or comments because this would only help us to improve. So we can also look at the the multilingual issue of um, of the tool. Do you have much experience with uh, higher education uh, instructors? Because I know teach, I, I don't know, but I think teachers in K-12 are more open uh, to, to think about their processes and how to teach the students. And I think that higher education instructors are a lot of times very cynical and right. maybe uh, they have their way of doing things and aren't too open to rethinking their uh, teaching methods. Yes. Um, yes, honest answer, we have not worked directly with um, higher education teachers. We've worked with uh, instructional designers in higher education and they like it. So um, at the moment, I have, um, I just signed up um, uh, an instructional designer from our university. She's sort of between jobs and, and, she's, uh, and she know our tool. And I said, you know, can you help us to, pro, to pro, um, kind of like design another customized um, interface for the learning design studio for higher education, for some more specific um, pedagogies, for example, like um, game-based learning or uh, problem-based learning or experiential learning uh, and and she's very interested so so I'm hoping that with that I would then be able to work with our um, Center for um, Enhancement of Teaching and Learning that's at the university level so I'm hope so I do think we would be able to work directly with teachers but if we work with the instructional design team and also our professional development team. They would be the people who would then be able to, to serve as an, an intermediary. Yeah. Are you, are you uh, an instructional designer? Yes. Good. And um, what do you feel? Do you think it would be helpful to you? To me, yes, but I don't get to actually do the designs of the courses. The instructors do that, and I only uh, help them in their process. 
and mm -hmm. I get to work with very few uh, instructors every year. And a system like this could open up the process to so many more instructors. Mm -hmm. And I think it's an amazing uh, system that can make them really think. Mm -hmm. But I don't know if um, emotionally they're really open to thinking uh, um, about their courses again, especially if they're very experienced instructors. Mm -hmm. And I think they sometimes need uh, to refresh uh, right. their views. Right, so. right. Yeah, I think, you know, um, our experience, even with the K-12, is that you, because it's quite alien to how they've been working before. So, but usually you can get a few who are interested. And, and once they, they, they see, I mean, they see the relevance to their work, they can be the ambassador. So they talk about what they do with that and so on. Then it becomes easier. To promote it, so we at the end of the day, we need teachers to promote the two to other teachers. Yeah. Thank you. So I think now I see Yishe here. I think we should go. Um, should we go back to the main room? Yes. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. So see you in the main room then. Bye. Thank you so much for a very interesting session. Thank you.